Lost Horizon was written in London 18 years ago during the winter of 1932. That was a hard winter for the world. The lowest point had we then known it of the Depression, and already dark with the threat of war to come. About that time, it probably began to dawn on civilized man that he lived in an age of recurrent and deepening crisis, that military victories did not bring peace, that his world wars would have to be given numbers, and that nowhere on earth was there any place where the storm could be outridden. It was in this mood that I wrote Lost Horizon, and I enjoyed writing it as one may sometimes almost consciously enjoy a dream. I remember taking walks near my home and climbing the English hills with wild thoughts of Everest and Kanchenjunga. I remember hours in libraries reading tales and legends of the great missionary travelers who explored all Central Asia centuries ago. And I remember when people asked what I was doing those days, it was fun to answer that I was busy on a novel about Tibet, thus leading to the natural question, had I ever been there? I hadn't, and still haven't, and the way things now look, I don't suppose I ever shall. But when recently I saw the motion pictures that Lowell Thomas and his son took during their astonishing Tibetan trip a year ago, I had the curious feeling that I had seen that land before with my own eyes, that I had heard its voices and chants and trumpets, and had breathed the thin, icy air of its mountain passes. And a further strange thing is that I once met another traveller from Tibet, a rather odd fellow he was, and he assured me that he had actually found the last valley of Shangri-La that I wrote about, a haven of peace and beauty hidden amidst the highest peaks in the world, and that it was all pretty much as I had described it. Of course, I can hardly believe that, but I should like to. I should like to.